Two years ago, my dad passed away. And I struggled with that because I, I said, you know, I, I want to find an answer and I want to fix things. And if we go through the room and we'd, we'd just start talking stories, every one of us would have a story where we didn't have enough. We didn't have what we needed. It, may, may, it could be you. It could be someone that you love. It could be your relationships. It could be your health. It could be your finances. It could be anything. And so when I read, he's given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. I look around the room and I look at myself and I say, it's not working. It's not working. So the question, when we get into a place like that, and this is where I'm trying to box it into a corner where we can't get out. Okay, so just let yourself feel trapped a little bit. You can't get out. The, your life, our lives, our current experiences have, uh, if I can say the word, proven that this verse is not true. Which do you believe? Which do you believe? Do you believe your experience? Or are you willing to say, my experience has been lying to me. So far, what I've experienced has not manifested, but that does not mean that this is not true. That that does not mean that verse 3 is not true. We have to come to the place where we are willing to stand on the truth even if we've never seen it in our lives. We have to be willing to stand on the truth. God wants you well. God wants you blessed. He wants you to live full of joy. I'm going to keep going, and I want you just to just feel the tension of this, of, of our current experiences, tension with the word, and let him answer this. But also for this very reason, let me see if I'm missing anything here. Uh, I'm going to keep going here. We'll come back to this. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance. Can you feel the build? To perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness love. For if these things, there's a condition. He's answering the question. Don't run away from these from this section of verses because it hasn't seemed to make sense. Let him answer the question for himself. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful. Oh, so wait, so we need to add these things. How does that happen? How do I, I thought I have everything. How do I add virtue, knowledge, Self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, love. How do I add them? Because if I can figure out how to do that, then I have it. Then I will be neither barren nor unfruitful. In fact, even in verse 10, it says, if you do these things, you will never stumble. So never stumble to me says, if... if something comes up against me, a financial roadblock, let's just use finances. I won't stumble over that roadblock because I will have, I will have accessed something to either get me around it or, or over it. See, this is where we live. And this is, this is where people that hear the message, you say, like you want to go and, and preach the gospel. You want to reach the lost. You want to tell them, He's everything for you. And they say, what about you? And they go, they're hypocrites. Why? Because they're not seeing it either. And so many times, I'm being real, okay? But there is, there's so much more, and he has made it so that we can access this. This is not hidden from us. It's hidden for us. So stick with me. He's showing us how to do this. I want to read, as an answer to this, I want to read Galatians 5, verses 22 to 25. 
And you guys would know these verses as well. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its, with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So you guys, I'm sure have heard those verses, maybe memorized them. I found another if in those verses. Did you, did you catch it? See, if you're hearing something you've heard before, you go, yeah, there's the fruits of the Spirit. I love the peace of the Spirit. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Okay, so a couple ifs, a couple conditions. See, God's promises are true, but are they guaranteed? It's not a trick question. God's promises are absolutely true, but they are not guaranteed. Every one of them has conditions. Even for you to become born again, there were conditions. You had to surrender. You had to believe. You had to confess with your mouth. If it was guaranteed, every person on the planet would be saved. Is it true? Absolutely. What about his promises? Philippians 4.19 But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Is that true? Yes, it is true. Is it guaranteed? No, it is not guaranteed. We have to realize that this is not just an automatic thing that you get born again and then you just sort of float until you die and then go to be with him. He wants you to experience him now. And he wants you to know how to access these things. This is the, the message that he has given us to give to other people. If you don't have the hope yourself, you can't give others hope. If you don't know how to access it, you can't show someone else how to access it. So we stay quiet. That's why we're quiet. It's not even because we're afraid. It's because we don't even know ourselves. Tell me if I'm not telling you the truth. Speaking your message. I have lived this. And it's frustrating. But he's showing us how to do this. <laughs> For real. Okay, so... The fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Different translations will have different words for those. Did you notice that the, the word Spirit is capitalized? This is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Okay? When you got born again, what happened in your heart? 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, what? Old things have passed away, all things have become... You have become a new creature, a new species. You are a new God-human combination. So when, when the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary and Jesus was conceived, that was the first God-man he is the firstborn among many brothers. When you got born again, Holy Spirit overshadowed your spirit and created another God-man. Do you understand? You are not the same. You don't have the same spirit. Your human side is only on the flesh, only the physical. You are now more spiritual than you are human. You are more spirit than you are. You are spirit, soul, and body. But in your spirit, you have the fullness of Jesus. See, what, what happened is your spirit was already dark. It was dead because of sin. It could not access the power of God. To be invited into that presence of power would be to die. Immediate. Can't contain it. Can't, can't be there. 
Because the Spirit of God, of Yahweh, has combined with your spirit, you can now go right into his presence. You actually have what it takes. And you have all of him in you. See, he doesn't live in temples made with hands. He lives in, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. What? Holy and acceptable. How are you holy? Are you perfect? Who thinks they're perfect here? Well, if we're talking in the Spirit, I'll raise my hand. See, He has made so that we are now perfect in His presence. So if that's the case, how much, let's see here, hmm, how much love do you have? How much joy do you have? What about peace? Oh, what about patience? Anybody ever pray for patience? Anybody ever told not to pray for patience? I can remember my parents saying, don't pray for patience because then something's going to happen that <clears throat> you'll need patience. I disagree with that. You know why? Because when I think of the fruits of the Spirit, I have to realize it's Him. His Spirit has His fullness. And where does it dwell? In here. So when you come up to a situation where you need something, let's, let's not use finances or healing, let's use patience. But the, all these things apply. If you need patience... Who's a, who's a fast driver? Somebody pulls out in front of you. <laughs> I see that hand. <laughs> He's pointing at his wife. So someone pulls out in front of you, and you're in motion. Oh, I mean, it's like out of my way. Who do you think you are? Don't you, don't you, didn't you see me? We can need patience like without planning on it, in a, in a heartbeat. What do you do in that moment? Do you just say, yeah, well, I'm, I don't have patience. Or do you say, I know that I'm not enough. I'll never be enough in myself. But he, you're, you're enough. And I have all of you. Thank you that I have patience. Thank you for, you know what? I am in a good place. You can do it. I'm serious. In, in, in a fraction of a second, if you train your heart to access what you already have, you already will have it. When, when you train yourself, you get into a situation, you're going to try this. It's going to work. I have done this. I love, I'm a fast driver. I'm an adventure sports guy. I like... Ah. I really like speed, and I'm not, not talking the drug. I really like speed. <laughs> I have accessed the patience of the Holy Spirit over and over and over, and I found him to be faithful. What about love? You only need love when there's unloving or unlovely people. If everybody's nice, what do you need love for? Everybody's nice. What about the jerks? What about the person that grates at you? Or Greg Moore, one of the instructors at, at Karis Bible College, he called them sandpaper people. He's like, we all have sandpaper people in our life. And they'll rub the rough edges off of you. Don't worry about it. They'll smooth you out. See, the sandpaper people, the, the, the person that is the most annoying to you, how do you love them? You don't have what it takes in, in yourself without the Holy Spirit. But are you ever without the Holy Spirit? See, so often we have, we have segmented ourselves out, away from him, and we've said, well, I'm only human. That's a lie. That's a lie. You're not only human, and you'll never, ever again be only human. If you've been born again... 
He has promised to never leave you or forsake you. So, you get into a situation where you need love. And it's not, you're not finding it. I mean, unless it's the five-fold ministry right here, baby. I'll love you. You can access it. He's there. He's not leaving you. You have to stop. You have to make the intention of, what's he say? Giving all diligence, verse 5. Giving all diligence. Add to your faith. So you're not adding it in, the, in the, the realm of saying, I have to take it from somewhere else and put it into me. You're adding it from the inside out. You're adding what he has already given you into your actions. Does that make sense? Give all diligence to add to your faith virtue, to, for, to virtue, you know, all these things. It ends up with self-control. Or self-control, perseverance, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, love. All of these things. What happens when you have been diligent day after day and the same person pulls out in front of you? I'm picking on you, but it's funny. <laughs> what happens when the same thing comes across your path and annoys you and you have made a practice, you have been diligent to add from the inside to your actions. And you have been diligent, adding virtue, adding virtue, adding it, adding it into your, you will change. Your actions reflect who you really are on the inside. See, you can be as perfect as you want, but again, do the actions or let's say fruits of the Spirit of God, do they come out of you automatically? No. <laughs> it takes diligence. You have to be willing in every situation. You have to be willing to be in connection with Him and allow Him to inform your situation. So you're going to have something that you need this week. Something's going to come up. I mean, it could be today, for goodness sake. It could be anything. Something will happen where you say, I'm in need. I'm in need of patience. I'm in need of love. I'm in need of finances. I'm in need of whatever. Do you realize that you have all of the healing of the Holy Spirit already inside of you? You're not going somewhere else to, to get it and put it into you. You're you're accessing who he is in you. Don't you know that you're the body of Christ? Here's a healing message. How can Jesus get sick? And at this point, the heresy, and you know. I mean, this the religious mind hates that message because... I'm equating myself, and you as well, to the body of Christ. Sickness tries to attach, was Jesus sick? See, we can agree with this until sickness tries to attach and you say, it's not working. Why is it not working? Every one of our situations is unique, and you will continue to face things. 